So I don't know if you know this uh, because we spoke, you know, in, in Brazil uh, for a while. So the video, I don't know, this is not what I meant the way I meant to start the interview, but Remember the video I shot of you? Yeah, yeah. Um, Where I was talking to the guys. Yeah, yeah. I have never seen so, – first of all, it went everywhere. I don't know if you're aware. But the thing that really was just really cool was that every single person who like talked about it or retweeted it was like – even some of them were like, I'm not the biggest Zack Snyder fan, but man, this is fucking awesome. Things like that. Like I've never seen so many people – so positive about something. And so can you sort of touch on that? Because it went everywhere. Yeah. I don't, I, I look, I, I didn't even, I didn't <clears throat> know that. I mean, you, I, you mentioned it to me at, on the day, but we've been so, um, you know, spun out on this tour. I never really had a chance to reflect on it. Um, except to say that, you know, it's weird because in the scenario, I was presented with this thing of like, Oh, these we're going to, we have this setup where we can put these guys in this movie in, in the trailer. Sure. And, you know, would you help them? Would you direct them? I guess is really the thing. I don't, I don't know what that means exactly, but will you help them not look crazy, <laughs> you know? And I, and so I, I, I was like, yeah, absolutely. Happily, happily. Like, and, and I think that that it's fun. It, by the way, it's no different than doing a normal shot in a movie, you know, in some ways, once you can kind of like, shut Comic-Con off that's behind you and just kind of, you know, be with the, be with the person that's there and try and, you know, they're doing their best and I was doing my best, you know? So yeah, I, I think that the, I think that it was, uh, it was kind of, uh, it was kind of, it was fun for me. I'll be honest. You know, I, I don't mind. I should also say that, uh, there were a lot of people who also said, this is why Zach is the goat. You okay. know, I just want to be clear that there was a lot. I've never just never seen so many people so positive about something. Well, I mean, it was cool. And it was a cool, it, by the way, I've never been in a scenario. I mean, it, it's a sort of perfect storm of like, okay, here's the camera. We have this cool background. We have this idea to put the people in. I'm there. So like, I guess we're oh. just going to make a shot. So it, it was like, it's cool. I, I don't, I've, I've never had an experience like that before. I, I don't know. I don't know that we could have manufactured it um, knowingly. You know what I mean? It kind of happens. Those things kind of happen. Like, I think, you know, I don't want to be sound like a jaded, but like, I think those things just happen if you do it. If you do it, if you have all the alchemy correctly, that, that can happen. So sure. It was um, fun. Also, no director of your stature has ever done something like that at Comic-Con. But let's move on to Rebel Moon. Nice. So with the thing that I'm listen, you've talked a lot about both films or both, you know, Rebel Moon one. But I have to ask in Rebel Moon one and Rebel Moon part two. Sure. What is one thing in each film that you like cannot wait for people to see? I think in Rebel Moon one. I think that the thing I'm most excited for people to kind of get caught up to the fact that by the time they're on the journey with Korra to track these guys down and bring them back to the village, you know, when they're, when we're, we're in that mode of searching for the, the guys that will fight with them, like it's, it's cool to wake up and be like, Oh shoot, we're in that kind of a movie. We're like really in it. We're going to get these guys. We're really going to, we're really going to, we're really setting up for like a war movie here. Um, and the cool thing is, is that there's a slight misdirect, <clears throat> you know, there, but the thing that I'm also super excited about is in movie two is the, is also the moment when you realize that you are in that, in that movie, you thought you were, that you were headed for, you know? And I think that that is, uh, that's what I'm excited about is the sort of culmination. It's, it is a two, it's a two book set. You need book two, sure. you know, which is fine. I, I know that you should know that, you know, it's the first episode, you know, you need part two to know where we go. And so, yeah, I just, I, I love that you're going to, the, the, the investment that you make in movie one pays dividends in movie two pretty heavily. So um, I know that the, originally you came, this was an original Star Wars idea mm -hmm. and obviously it, it became Rebel Moon, but you do have a nod to Star Wars at the very beginning of Rebel Moon part one. Oh, sure. And so can you sort of talk about, was that um, like, is that an intentional nod to Star Wars? Like how did that opening shot happen? How did you decide to do it? Yeah. Uh, we needed like a transition down to the planet and it just felt like this tilt down to the, to the 
the planet felt like the, the easy way to do it. There was a little bit of irony in that it, it feels like the tilt down is in space, but then when it lands, it's actually on the ground. So I thought that was kind of a, 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 a slight like curveball for the classic, you know, planet reveal that we're kind of used to. Um, but I just thought, I just, you know, I dig the language and I dig the sort of, everyone knows what it is. It's not like, uh, it's kind of comforting in a weird way because you're, you, you know, you feel like, okay, I see where we're going. I, 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 I get this, this vocabulary and you have to be, I feel like you have to walk people into that stuff. You know, you can't just like you slap them. You have to give them a little bit of like, give them a little bit of familiar uh, ground to, 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 to stand on at first. And then you can kind of go nuts. So obviously you've done a lot of cool shit in your career, but when was the last time, and it might've been on this movie, but when was the last time the night before you were filming something, you were like genuinely nervous. Like how are exactly we going to do this? Yeah, no, that happened a lot on this movie. Um, you know, being the cinematographer and the director on a movie like this, either one of those jobs is nerve wracking on its own. Um, but, uh, there was plenty of days that we were on this movie that I, uh, it's funny in movie two, we harvest the crops, right? And, uh, it's kind of like a days of heaven sequence in the middle of the movie. And I, you know, that was all like weather dependent. And then we had to have these great sunsets and all this stuff we were hoping for, you know, and you know, there's no wood around here, but, uh, you know, we were worried that we wouldn't get it. And, you know, thank God we had a lot of great, a lot of great moments in the, in, in the, in the harvesting sequences. But that stuff I was really nervous about because we'd grown this wheat for months and it was golden and perfect. And we were just marching into this giant wheat field to chop it down with all of our actors who didn't know how to, they were learning how to scythe and all that. So like, I didn't know like how good they would be at it and they were great and it was amazing. So yeah, I had plenty of times I was nervous. I just want to point out before we wrap that I literally out of the corner of my eye, I saw a spaceship going yeah. across the screen and I'm like, line. wait, what is going on here? Yeah. No, no. Well, you know, Netflix, uh, they, they didn't mess around with this. No, no, not kidding. Uh, on that note, sir, I really do hope it's a huge hit and I uh, can't wait to see part two. Thank you so much.